Triangle of Sadness is a 2022 film written and directed by Ruben Osland. It covers issues such as class, equality, cynicism and clashing ideologies. Told in three parts, the film satirically looks at the world of modelling, the uber-rich on a luxury yacht and questions what happens when your status changes. Money is the elephant in the room as Carl and Yaya get into it over who should be picking up the cheque. Triangle of Sadness is all about what you have and what you don't, from the models being asked if they work for a smiley brand meaning cheap or grumpy brand meaning expensive, the division of wealth has already set its boundaries. Two factions, rich and poor, smiley and grumpy. And even if you do climb a little higher, there's always a chance someone with a higher status or of more importance comes along leaving you without a seat. Oslund claims he didn't want the film to be Manichaean, meaning seeing things in simple terms like black and white. However, he depicts a world where his characters do see things that way. The models are modern day slaves, told only to look good and walk. The female models earn three times what the male models do, and yet modeling campaigns advertise equality. Carl's attempted discussion on equality fails with Yaya, if you love it, you have to fight for it. I've been there, I know. If you don't fight, you're going to be her slave. When they're shipwrecked later in the film, Carl is even more of a slave than ever. His value on the island useless, like everyone else apart from Abigail. Everyone uses what they have to their advantage. The rich usually have no troubles. Whatever the cost, it is no problem. Yaya relies on her looks, Carl too. Abigail's capital is her ability to keep them alive. Everyone plays their best card. Carl sides with Abigail out of necessity. And when Yaya is jealous, she can only kiss Yamo in retaliation. She literally only has her good looks and status as a model as cards to play. The film has scenes near the beginning and end with discussions about money next to an elevator. The elevator, a mode of transport that can only go up and down. This is symbolic of how the film treats its characters. You can gain material wealth and relax on a yacht, or work for those that do. In a capitalist society, you are either in the penthouse or the basement. Abigail says what the rich didn't have to. Shouldn't that give me some kind of advantage? Yeah, yeah, of course. Her capital on the island, the most valuable. The wealthy had an advantage beforehand and could avoid tax, get rich doing ungodly things, dictate, nay, command low-income workers to do what they ask. Therese confessed she slept with someone to attain a job, another form of capital, something someone could take advantage of, her body. Capital comes in many forms. Paola tries to make the rich happy post-shipwreck, but she is yet to realise that their capital no longer holds power with their current situation. Division is everywhere, equality does not exist. The fashion show blasts catchy slogans like everyone's equal. It's complete parody and shows that the fashion world is all surface, trying to be substantial. The ship divides upstairs and downstairs, rich and poor. Yes sir, yes ma'am. You're all equal. Mm, that is so true. Everyone's <laughs> equal. <laughs> Everything is fine. There is equality, that's the message. But crew member Alicia knows the truth. Desiree's life plays over and over and over during the cruise, and it is the most everything is fine song there is. Its music video literally replaces pesticide with butterflies. Life is a joy, relax, everyone is equal. Vera wants a role reversal, but with no stakes to her own status. She wants to paper over the cracks, let the staff swim for 30 minutes. Alicia cannot say no, recall yes sir, yes ma'am. She has to enjoy the moment, where in reality she just can't wait for this whole thing to be over and to be paid for looking after them. The ship rocks during the captain's dinner. 
almost as if to try and shift the classes, below deck inching higher, upper deck wavering, the ground beneath them unstable, a shipwreck needed to upset the balance between class disparity. There isn't a stronger image of inequality than the Filipino cleaning staff scrubbing vomit-ridden carpets while a self-playing piano clatters away. Equality isn't there. Yaya earns three times as much as Carl, though they do the same job. There are industries where men earn more than women, and it's a debate that rages on. The rich on board are living beyond a natural reality, in the clouds, you might say, which is what Therese can only say during the film. In the it literally means being out of touch with reality. It's almost another dimension. This woman claims the sails are dirty on a motorized vessel. They are rich, elite, and utterly out of touch. Carl and Yaya's relationship is all self-interest. It's good for business, she says. The cruise is free because she's an influencer. She won't be eating this pasta, it's just for the gram and her brand. It's a scathing look at this corner of modern day society. Yaya doesn't even love Carl. They role play as a pool boy and a married woman for kicks. Flies hover around them during scenes. Flies typically attracted to, well, you know, shit. Speaking of shit, here's Dimitri. The man who got rich selling fertilizer and swans around with his wife and mistress without any shame. Other guests include Clementine and Winston, their self-interest lining their pockets with money made from selling landmines and hand grenades, believing they've been upholding democracy. Everyone in this world is motivated by self-interest. The modeling world has to stay relevant and yet has slogans like cynicism masquerading as optimism, which I still can't wrap my head around. It's just complete bullshit to make them seem like they care about anything outside of their modelling bubble. Staying relevant is all they wish. Like the elite, as long as they stay rich, they have nothing to worry about. On the island, they only have to worry about staying alive. If they stay alive, they can be rescued. And if they can be rescued, they can go back to feeling relevant again. The problem is, whatever your ideology, there seems to be a conflicting one, and they are wrong, and you right. And even despite the captain claiming to be a Marxist, Dmitry continues to call him a communist. A Russian capitalist and an American <laughs> communist. Oh. On a $250 million luxury yacht. Maybe we need conflicting ideologies to continue to grow, whether people push capitalism, communism, socialism. Perhaps variety worldwide keeps us on our toes, questioning what works and what doesn't. Abigail creates a matriarchy on the island. One for you, one for me, one for you, one for me. The captain and Dimitri have a quote off to convince the other or perhaps challenge the other's thinking, but it is completely futile and fueled by copious amounts of alcohol. It seems people change their ideology to best fit their situation. Carl is all for equality before the shipwreck, and afterwards sells his body to Abigail, saying I love you, you give me fish. People change. Why, it can't be a coincidence that Dmitry the Russian capitalist grows a beard and resembles Karl Marx when the shit hits the fan. He even quotes Marx on the first night, suggesting they create a good society. Uh, from each according to his ability, to each according to his needs. <sighs> The film definitely wants to say something about American politics as well, where like the rest of the world they have two strong political ideologies. Colours of the American flag are plastered on the male models whilst they wear USA trunks. On the island, Yamo approaches and brutally kills a donkey of all animals. The donkey, the symbol of the Democratic Party. Perhaps a little heavy-handed, but a political party that pushes social change being slaughtered by the tax-avoiding uber-rich is very on point. People do change over time. Now Dimitri is shipwrecked, his wealth is meaningless. He promises to share his wealth later on, but it fails. His only card is to play nice and help out. He shines a torch for Abigail. Now she is in charge. 
In the real world, he is a capitalist. On the island, a communist. Their island owned by community, each person contributing their abilities and sharing what they have. It just so happens the rich have very little here, and it's Abigail that has so much. The film shows the rise of a character to matriarch, from a one-dimensional character on board the ship, by part three, Abigail rises. We didn't notice her before because we were trained to watch those with capital. Abigail had none. She is so easily not seen, the toilet manager on a luxury cruise liner. The captain understood it long ago, which is why he probably gave up. It's a futile existence, and he hides from the elite for as long as he can. He tells them all they are swimming in abundance while the world drowns in misery. We should be upset. We may be asked to relax our triangle of sadness, but it isn't relaxed because of the disparity and hardship. We should be angry about slogans claiming everyone is equal. It's bullshit upon layers of more bullshit. But as soon as we get a taste of fresh air, we are quick to hoard it for ourselves. Abigail shows signs of self-importance. Then she uses a facial spray to hydrate herself, then wastefully sprays Carl and licks the moisture from his body. Her leadership was strong, disciplining the boys for stealing the pretzel sticks, but Abigail can only hold on to her power for so long. It's a resort, Abigail! A what? It's a resort! Abigail prepares a rock, much like Yamo did for the donkey. Yaya, in danger. Carl runs towards them, lashed by branches. The cab driver told him to fight for Yaya or he will be her slave, but Carl, like so many of us, has to fight for himself and for others like him, or inequality will continue. Abigail has to kill Yaya to stay in control on the island. She will never get an opportunity like this again. There isn't a ladder to climb or an elevator to step into. On the island, she has all the tools for success. Who wants to go down a social class? The rich sure don't, and they cling to it as best they can. Everyone is equal, but me first seems to be the rule. Use what you have to get ahead, and don't ever let go. We're all motivated by self-interest. None of us want to be struggling. But like Abigail, we don't want to be struggling while the elite pamper us not with riches, but with their compassionate superiority. Or should I say, pity. Everyone is equal, but some people are more equal than others. Thank you. Thank you.